remember to comment, like, subscribe, and share the videos. This really helps me a lot. Thanks in advance. Weeks before the May 1980 Mount St. Helens eruption, geologist Barry Voigt traveled to the mountain by helicopter at the request of Rocky Crandall and Donald Mullineau. His concern was immediate after observing that the dome had undergone serious cracking, bloating, disfiguration, and steam explosions. When the warning signs became noticeable, they were ignored by the residents and tourists. It is thought that the fear of losing revenue from the tourism bolstered business owners to reassure the visitors that everything was just fine. In addition, road barricades were driven around. Safety measures were either inadequate for the coming event and or ignored. 57 lives were lost in the eruption, including the Seabold family. Ron, Barbara, and two children were found with ash-filled lungs in their car. Ash turns to concrete when it comes into contact with a moist environment like the lungs. A cassette tape recording was found of them kidding around about possibly seeing lava. They thought they were safe. Klaus Zimmerman also left in his car to take pictures of the mountain and died due to ash asphyxiation in his car. John and Christy Killian were still newlyweds on a camping trip. The majority of the lost were burned in the pyroclastic flow while some bodies were never found. The blast took everyone by surprise. It was so large that it leveled everything for miles and created the largest landslide in recorded history. It buried Tootle County in 150 feet of debris. The environmental effects were as such because there was so much new sediment in the Colorado River that it changed the ecosystem to this day. At the time, the immediate effects were listed as river water level rise that overtopped banks, polluted the water, clogged channels, and halted ship traffic. There was also massive forest damage, toxic air temporarily, livestock and animal losses in mass, and also a temporary blocked out sun. Additional potential hazards of a volcanic eruption near you could be sulfur dioxide gas from the volcano that can lead to acid rain and air pollution. Volcanic ash can travel hundreds to thousands of miles downwind. Aggravated respiratory issues, deterioration of water quality, fewer periods of rain, crop damage, damage to roads, bridges, homes, and dams, as well as communication issues. Volcanic winters are also a thing. According to Wikipedia, a volcanic winter is a reduction in global temperatures caused by droplets of sulfuric acid obscuring the sun. It has been proposed that the cooling effects of volcanic eruptions can extend beyond the initial several years, lasting for decades to even possibly millennia. This prolonged impact is hypothesized to be a result of positive feedback mechanisms involving ice, ice and ocean dynamics. Mount Rainier, according to Google, Scientists believe that earthquakes at Mount Rainier occur by hydrothermal fluids lubricating existing faults within basement rock underlying the Rainier edifice. Well, the fault line near Mount Rainier is the Cascadia. And speaking of the Cascadia, there is, in fact, a warning system in place that you can enable on your phone if you're in that area through emergency settings or in downloading a free MyShake app. Currently, it can potentially provide 10 seconds, a whole 10 seconds, to a tad over a minute of warning time for any unexpected mass aquatic contents to visit far inland. Engineers have been working on an offshore early warning floor seismometer system to cover the entirety of the 700 mile long fault line. The project was projected to be completed in the spring of 2024. It already boasts that alerts are sent three to five seconds after a quake starts in that area. And if you are not within 10 miles of that epicenter, 
you won't get an alert. Yeah. Of areas affected by the Cascadia Fault, Vancouver and Victoria, British Columbia, Seattle, Washington, and Portland, Oregon. Speaking of Oregon, on June 26, residents were evacuated due to a wind-driven wildfire. Lots of wildfires out that way right now. So, we need to know what we can do to stay safe. And we can do that by listening to authorities and really with communication issues at times, it's best to have a battery powered radio for that just in case or a solar powered radio. That's even better. Don't breathe in the air without a respirator, wet handkerchief over the nose and mouth or just stayed sealed in the house. Goggles over the eyes because the tear ducts. Don't drive your car. Ash will get into the engine and your lungs. You'll get concrete lung suffocation and will lose the car and you. Avoid areas downwind. Evacuate as early as you can and if possible before the eruption. Watch the signs of growth for the volcanoes around you as well as the ones uh, below the water if at all possible. That's all we have for today. I want to thank you for stopping by. God bless you. And we will talk soon. Bye.